Hello again, this is Athena Jezik, and we thought we would work the fronts of the legs. We haven't done that for a while, so I'm just gonna work the front of the legs and show you some massage techniques for that. Um, you can make it relaxing. Uh, again, uh, it's best not to go too deep and too furious into these muscles. Uh, these muscles work pretty hard. They're big muscles and they do work pretty hard. So uh, like normal, I just start out just kind of getting it, assessing the muscle, what it's feeling like and, you know, where there's lactic acid buildup or where there might be tension, extra tension. And you do want to get up to the, as high as you can to where the hip crest is. And then the hip, you're going to the side a little more in the hip socket and checking the knee, the knee you want to have, you want to be able to see that patella moving. It's not good when the patella isn't flexible and just check all that out. It's good to have little bolsters. We have little bolsters here just to elevate the knees slightly. And then we'll work down into the lower leg and probably the top of the foot as well. So that's been pretty much assessed already as I was talking. It's one thing when you do this work for a long time, after a while, it seems like you move fast at it, but it's really, you really aren't. It's just that the effectiveness and proficiency of it is, is different. So you're not just racing through it, but you're still doing the work, even though it looks like it's fast. It's, it's really not. You know, and then if you want to, and you know the techniques, you can also check the lymph flow and see how the lymph is moving. And you can also check the cranial rhythm to see if that's balanced, or the squar is balanced. But none of that is important in massage, really. It's just extra little things that people can do when they have that uh, technique, that modality under their belt. So again, we're going to get some oil. And get a little tiny bit on the hands, not too much. Some of you may notice I am wearing a copper bracelet. And the copper bracelet is seeming to be helpful. I've been doing some reading with copper and copper uh, farming. I guess it's called electroculture. Copper is very interesting. I also drink out of a copper cup. So I just finished applying all the oil and now with massage, the thing about massage is I can't just start really and truly if I'm going to do it properly at the tops of the legs because you need to start distally and move proximally because that's the way that the, you want to help the blood flow going toward the heart. So I'm going to just work from one side and have you see. I'm going to be going between the, kind of between the toes here. Um, you know how the foot is. It's got these little bones, the um, tarsals, and then the metatarsals, and then the ankle bones, which, you know, they all tie together, checking a little bit of range of motion with the gliding. It's circular, and you can even do some stretching there with the feet. And then what I like to do with the lower part of the body is it's the same type of thing that I do on the back with the sciatica work, but this is going along this kind of thick muscle along here. And it's, I'm going little by little just a cross fiber friction. It's on the lateral side of the body because that gets tight. Sometimes that gets so tight that you'll get charley horses at night, and that's really unpleasant. It's just a tightening of the muscle. And then it kind of spazzes out. Then you can draw up. Uh, this is like going with the fibers. And I'm using these three fingers from this side of the body. If I was on the other side, I would probably use the thumb and go more with a thumb iron, but you can use a thumb iron or a finger iron. It's the same thing. And you want to feel that really smooth out and you want to feel it pulling you in between the fibers. And 
and then just little circular motions just loosening everything up okay and then going into the inner thigh here I'll do this on this leg so you can see it I'll here we're going to do a similar thing only I'm going to go with circular motion and of course you do this on one leg at a time you do all this on one leg and down and kind of pull it you're kind of pulling that muscle upward and kind of pulling it up but very gently you're not yanking it up you're just it's kind of a kneading type of feeling. And then again, you can do the thumb irons along the bone, right along that shin bone to the knee. And then a little bit farther over up to the knee. And then there we go. So then I'm doing circular motion here. And this muscle is a little bit different place than the other, but you can also do these, uh, this cross fiber friction coming up there. It'll just get it a little bit deeper. And you can feel how the muscle gets thicker as you get closer to the knee. Okay, and then pulling that muscle as you go back down. And then a nice glide up going towards the heart. Then into the knee, you want to make sure that you're going around the kneecap on both sides. So this in the inner side, you'd be going this way and this way, outer side, same thing. And then you want to make sure that the patella is moving. It's, um, it's better when it is moving. It's held basically in place by muscles. And when you have knee pain, if it's on the sides of, the, of this patella where the pain is, then that's uh, a better pain to have, I guess you could say. But if it's right straight in the middle behind the kneecap, then there's a little bit more of a problem going on with your knee. And it could be kind of serious knee issues. So just be mindful of that, where the pain is, where the pain pattern is. And you can rotate it a little bit. Just let it take you where it's ever it's rotating. Don't force it. And I'm going to go to this knee so you can also see it from the inside. Just working it that way. Coming up and around and then getting inside the fleshy part of the knee here. The knee takes a lot of, you know, it's a hinge joint and it doesn't do well when it's out of that hinge just like hanging on a door it doesn't do well when it's out of its hinge alignment so it, the the knee really does take a lot of pressure you know whenever we're bending our knees especially beyond 90 degrees and that's why it's so important to make sure that when you are bending your knees that you do have your foot in the proper position which is the knee right over the big toe if the toe is a little bit out and the knee is bending then you're torquing the the joint of the knee and that's going to wear out the knee over time so you want to be very careful about that and that will also take some of the bones of the feet close to the, especially the cuboid, it's going to move that a little bit out of position as well because your heel strike isn't being aligned. And the heel strike is also important to pay attention to. The subtle alignment is really very important. Most people don't understand subtle alignment and the significance of it. So I get kind of fanatic at times about making sure that the sessions that I do with people that I always go through and make sure that the alignment of the subtle anatomy is, is there. And I work that from the cranial point of view. Now we're going to go up here. And again, we're just 
this is the front part of that iliotibial track. So now to get into that area, working a little. Sometimes, you know, you can probably see I'm kind of moving from side to side. It's not really a straight shot down. It just kind of moves the muscle, manipulates the muscle a little bit more, and it helps to get a little bit deeper into that tissue, particularly with cross fiber, because you're not really going with the fiber at all. And you want to get up into that hip area here. And then just take some kneading coming back down, which is, it's pretty relaxing if you're not digging in. Then with the quadricep, I'm going to take two fingers, one on each side of this major quadricep muscle, the top one. This muscle is really important, and I am learning more about this muscle since this is where a lot of the damage had been done for the episode that I've just been through. And it, it attaches up here, it, it's to the, it's the hip flexor, it, with the hip flexor muscles. I, and I'll tell you, that that's a hard one to get to restore. It also affects, in my case anyway, it's affecting the knee as well, how much the knee, because the two muscles, the, the origins and insertions are from the hip to the knee. And it it's really uh, quite an ordeal to get that to get strong again, particularly the longer you're off of your leg, the, the more time it's going to take to get it back. And it's not real comfortable either, so just be mindful if you do have any kind of injury along this area of your leg into the femur bone, just take the time that you need to strengthen it. Don't, don't be in a rush for it. It's better to take a little bit more time and be patient with it than to rush into it and, and over strain the muscle when it's not ready for it. So now I'm just doing some of this, you know, thumb ironing or finger ironing across that quadricep. And that feels pretty good. Now for the inner thigh, it's the same kind of thing. You're going to work in. And just down now, remember there's the inguinal triangle. It's similar to the space behind the knee that I've spoken about before. And the inguinal triangle has a lot of lymph nodes, veins, nerves coming there. And it's a triangular about from here to here. So you don't want to dig into that area very much. And you want to stop kind of at the lower side of the inguinal triangle. Now, if somebody does have an injury uh, with one of the adductor muscles and you have to get in there deeply, there's techniques to get into that area, but it's you really have to know what you're doing to get in there so you don't cause any damage to some of the other structures. So there we go up there, and then we can knead some more and pull that into that side of the quadricep. And then we can also do the thumb irons. Now here we're not into the inguinal triangle here. You're following that right up into the hip flexor. But this next sweep is going to start going into that inguinal triangle. So I tend to curve a little bit out and go back. So I go around that inguinal, and then this one is aiming straight for the inguinal triangle. So I'm just going to, again, curve it and bring it up into the hip flexor, just not to cause any damage there. You just want to be careful. You don't want to hurt anybody, but you want to have your work be effective as well. And I think that's the balance and the uh, what people who are doing this work should strive for. And it does take time, so we have to have patience with our learning process as well. And then just kind of rotate this way. I'll do this on both legs. 
So it's just sweeping back and forth. It's kind of pulling. This is a nice way to finish because it feels like it's just putting everything back together. Up and to the hip area. And you can, I'm not going into the inguinal triangle. I'm staying clear of that. And then just sweeping up from the legs, just giving a nice good sweep. And you can be firm with this. It just feels kind of good to just sweep up. And then if you want to, and you know how to do that, you can check the um, knee position with the cuboid on this position as well to make sure that that's balanced. Um, what you feel if it's not balanced is you feel the two areas that your hands are like they're doing a dance together, trying to make the steps right. And it's very, very subtle, subtle feeling. So you really, you can, Hold it firmly, but you don't want to hold it with a lot of pressure. And actually, after you get a firm hold on and you meld in, the more movement you're going to have as you let go of it a little bit and put a little bit more energy into it. And that's another very interesting thing to learn is how to direct energy, because that's where the lighter touch is going to actually give you more movement than the heavy touch. You lose it a lot of times in the heavy touch. And so that's how I know if I'm too heavy on it, even though I think I'm really light, I can't feel it. And then I pull out of it, kind of back out. And then pretty soon the movement is just incredible because I'm actually feeling that subtle anatomy moving. I'm not pushing oh, kind of to do, beyond it. It just kind of disappears if you have too much pressure. You're more into the bigger structures there. And then as you learn this more and more, how to properly use the energy, it becomes even more mobile. And there's more shifting and more changing that actually happens. So those are just little hints that can round out your practice and really kind of take you to a new level. And I think it's important for what's coming in the circles of medicine is it's going to be um, much more subtle, much more frequency related than um, we've been having. And it's going to be good frequencies, not, not uh, frequencies that cause harm. Like so many of these tests that we take uh, do, they're, they're pretty strong frequencies that don't really, aren't really good for the body. So just be mindful of that as well. Okay, now what I'm noticing here is this kneecap isn't quite as mobile as this kneecap. It is mobile, but it's just a little bit tighter. So I would just rotate that a little bit, see if I can get loosened. And you can go kind of under the kneecap, but it, you don't go very far. But there is a little bit difference there. There, it feels like now it's more mobile. It's much closer now to that one. It, and probably after it processes for about 12 hours or so, it'll move itself into correction. So I'm not concerned that there's anything going on with that. It's just a little tighter. It could be the way, you know, the way that she carries things or now it, now it feels like it's, now it feels like it's the same. It feels like it's into its symmetry. Okay, and then we'll just brush up again and brush up again. Three times is always kind of nice for some reason. I don't know. People like to do things three times. And there you have it, the tops of the legs, thighs, lower leg, a little bit on the feet. And so thank you so much again for viewing this video. I hope you got something out of it. 
Thanks for the likes, the comments. Really appreciate it. Thank you for those of you who are so kind in your prayers and your financial assistance through this troubled time. And I hope to see you soon. If you are interested in learning some of these more subtle techniques, just check out the website below the video and take a look at my Subtle Anatomy course. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video. I want to invite you to explore my course, The Foundations of Subtle Alignment. It is going to take you beyond the work of massage therapy. It will take you into the world of the subtle anatomy. In this course, you will learn about the subtle anatomy and a protocol for assessing and aligning the subtle structures. Misalignment of the subtle structures is often the root cause of chronic pain, injuries, and chronically high levels of stress hormones. These techniques offer profound benefit whether you are working on people with complex issues or not.